All right. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, for the Matterport webinar uh, focused around the MEP engineering. Um, let's just do a quick audio test. Um, if you could please just chat, use the chat dialog there to say if you can hear me, hear me clearly. If not, let me know and I'll make some adjustments. Hey, Ricky, you on the call as well? All right, my colleague is gone silent. Okay. So we're going to start right now. Okay, great. So today's a quick introduction to Matterport Scan to BIM, Scan to CAD technology. Um, some of you may have seen it, heard of it, uh, maybe seen other companies use it. It is a phenomenal technology uh, that has really come a long way over the past couple of years, um, and it keeps getting better. Uh, just earlier today, I was probably uh, in the back room stocking up uh, the Matterports and packing them up and sending them out to a dozen new customers. So it's definitely been a, a hot seller here at SolidCAD. Um, we do have a big demand for the Matterport units today. So, hey, Ricky, have you joined us? Hi. All right. So what we're going to do today, we're going to do a quick introduction to Matterport and SolidCAD. We're going to talk about more traditional workflows of going on site and dealing with site measurements. Uh, we'll take a look at what the Matterport's capable of. Then we'll kind of move a little bit into um, integration with Autodesk Revit, you know, and also similar to AutoCAD workflows, because that's where a lot of the people are asking today is how do we get the field measurements into AutoCAD and Revit? All right, I'm just going to make sure everyone's muted. Okay. So a quick uh, update on SolidCAD, you know, we've if you've been working with us over the past few years, you've probably seen us kind of grow and, um, you know, we've kind of keep expanding across Canada, and, uh, building better and smarter specializations uh, with, within our teams. Um, if you're not familiar, we are part of the Cancel uh, group of companies. So we are, uh, you know, specialized in a number of different fields and as well as with our sister companies, we're able to leverage their technology and uh, specializations and techs as well. Some of the services that we cover, um, you know, we do cover the usual training for Revit and AutoCAD, BIM implementation services, you know, project support. Um, but we also do a lot of other things that you may not have been aware of, you know, such as program development, you know, creating either customizations for clients, um, also technical support. You know, we get a ton, a ton of questions coming in every day uh, about how to use the software, you know, something is glitching with it basic things about licensing. Um, definitely, if you're scratching your head, if you're looking for the answer, chances are we probably have it right away you know, available. So just please give us a call. Our phone line, again, is 1-877-438-2231 and just the extension to number two to get our support team. Or you can just email us at support at solidcad.ca as well. Some of the other partner programs that we support, you know, beyond just Autodesk and Matterport, uh, we also cover the CTC productivity tools, Lumion for visualization, as well as the more advanced V-Ray technology, Bluebeam for digital document review, as well as some other high-end uh, data management solutions such as Accruent. So if you are interested in any of these uh, technologies, please don't hesitate to reach out to our staff and we'll be happy to connect you with the right person in our company who does specialize on these product lines. SolidCAD is located all across Canada. We do have a number of different offices throughout the major cities. Um, while we have this COVID crisis and a lockdown uh, for in-person training, we have had a tremendous amount of success with our online training. So if you are interested, uh, please head out to head to our website, take a look at our events page and our training page to see some of the 
uh, unique online training sessions. And we do have a unique way of using virtual workstations so you don't have to use yours during the training. So Matterport and SolidCAD, we've been working with, uh, with Matterport for the past uh, two or three years. Um, and the relationship has been really uh, great. You know, we've seen a tremendous amount of success uh, within the architecture, mechanical, electrical, engineering fields, as well as construction. And there's some additional uh, segments within the market that have also been leveraging the Matterport system, such as uh, forensic engineering, uh, insurance uh, and claim uh, adjusters have been using it as well for disaster sites. So there's a lot of use cases with the Matterport, and we're really happy to have helped a lot of our customers uh, become successful in leveraging the technology. technology. So before even I, we go further, if you're always wondering who's actually using Matterport, well, we made actually a really su a big success case uh, story on AJ Changus. And uh, they put out a really great uh, video um, in collaboration with Solid Cat and Matterport about how they used it for the Toronto Western um, Hospital. So you, if you head out to head to our website or our YouTube channel, you can watch um, um, you know, a, a quick four or five minute uh, video about how they've been leveraging the Matterport system for their projects, but we actually did a, also a, a, a more detailed presentation with HH Angus where they kind of dive right into the details of the project that we're looking at right here uh, with Matterport, and they'll kind of give you some tips and tricks on how to use uh, Matterport with Autodesk Recap and Revit MEP. So Matterport is more than just hardware, but it's more of a cloud platform. And what we're looking at here is a number of different uh, hardware units that they support. The most common one that a lot of our customers are buying into is the Pro 2 unit, it's a large square scanner here. Um, it is a really powerful unit, giving you both 4K uh, visualization as well as these uh, point cloud data um, that you know traditional cameras are not able to provide. But it also plugs into some of the other 360 cameras as well as the Leica BLK uh, scanner as well. And recently, they launched the uh, support for uh, the iPhone and iPad to use its uh, camera with its Cortex uh, AI technology. So if you are interested in some of the other extended uh, product lines or uh, hardwares that they support within their cloud, um, please touch base with us, and we'll give you a little bit of guidance on that. So we're talking about different use cases with Matterport, and we're seeing Matterport used throughout the different lifecycle of a project. Uh, there's a lot of information on here, but you know, just letting you know that almost every segment of a project it has an opportunity to use um, some kind of scanning technology. So if we look at just in the AC market, we see a lot of uh, customers, you know, within uh, facility management who are using it for providing maybe either wayfinding maps or creating some um, onboarding uh, uh, walkthroughs. You know, even safety trainings. We see architects and engineers using it for um, you know, traditional as builds, you know, that we'll be covering in this presentation. Uh, general contractors are using it for, you know, uh, snapshots of milestones. You know, we want to make sure, uh, you know, people are held accountable for any issues on site. They're even using the Matterport for uh, project closeouts. We're even doing QAQC workflows, uh, punch workflows with it. So there's a lot of good use cases with the technology. So when we're looking at Matterport and beyond, you know, if we kind of generalize it, the two main buckets that I see people are using it for is construction documentation and the as builds, which we'll be looking at for this presentation. And this is, presentation is really focused on more of the consulting design side uh, of using Matterport within Revit, but not to say that you can't use it with AutoCAD. So I, I earlier mentioned that Matterport is a cloud platform that can plug into a number of different hardwares, but the most common one is the Pro 2 unit that uh, we sell here at SolidCAD. And it's a really powerful technology that you know can give you a ton of visual information, but that visual information can also be converted into point cloud data, the data structure that you want to bring into your CAD or BIM uh, software authoring tool. Now, when we look at our more traditional ways, you know, of going on site and measuring, um, you know, I've 
heard over and over where someone might tell me that they had to go on site and you know visit it maybe multiple times they forgot something they missed uh, you know a critical detail um the measurements don't add up or like the space plan that they sketched up didn't add up you know even providing that information to your design team and they're scratching their heads trying to and you know interpret your your chicken scratch on your notepad so you know there's better ways that we can you know grab the information from the field using reality capture Now, the most common question people always ask me is when we're discussing Matterport is, well, how accurate is, is Matterport? Well, you know, Matterport, we put it as a schematic as measuring tool uh, to create your as built to initiate and fast track, uh, you know, the primer, like the initial design in a project. So it's a schematic tool. Um, you know, again, we're, we don't position Matterport to being, you know, down to the millimeter accurate, but in general sense, you'll get a ge geometrically a correct shape of the building, the interior, and you know accuracy wise, it's about ninety nine percent as per the uh, information technical specifications that Matterport has issued. So, you know, I, if you're just looking for a way to understand, you know, uh, what the systems MEP systems are going to look like in um, you, the in building, well. Matterport is perfect because, again, it will still give you a really accurate representation of the existing uh, piping and ductwork. So, you know, what can you scan? We, we looked at H.A. Changas earlier. Um, they were using Toronto Western Hospital. You know, they were probably in the tens of 20,000 square feet plus of different parts of the building and the campus. But I've seen Matterport used on a number of different sizes, you know, from the small little mechanical rooms that we're going to take a look in our presentation here today, but I've also seen people take it into large gas plants and, you know, importing that information into, again, uh, Revit to develop the schematic plans so they can provide a better understanding of how all the systems are routed together. The one, you know, caveat is, again, making sure that you have a good iOS device, uh, which is the remote and container for all the data after you scan. Um, that it has enough memory and CPU power. So as the scans do get bigger and bigger, you definitely want to have a decent size, uh, you know, iOS device, whether it be an iPhone 11 or um, a iPad Pro, in order to support that data on your iPad or iPhone. So some of the like, other things that you get out of your Matterport scan, whoop, we'll come back to that in a moment. Um, again, we get that 4K walkthrough, that showcase. We'll take a look at a couple of examples. We can also request a schematic 2D floor plan uh, that Matterport uh, uh, Cloud can develop for you. And again, this is really rough black line drawings. Um, the more, more advanced, more accurate representation of your scan would be the point cloud. So you can download a open format called the XYZ uh, file and then use Autodesk Recap Pro uh, within your AC collection in order to uh, you know, save that and import that into Revit. And again, we can also get all the other high-res images that we can snapshot throughout the uh, walkthrough and use that for future marketing or facility management uh, manuals or, you know, whatever requires 2D static images. So metric-wise, here's a, here's a nice little chart that you guys could, you know, look at later on. But, you know, when, we, when people are asking me how much time and money do you really save using a scanning technology? Well, it's pretty significant. I mean, you look at how much time you end up spending taking pictures and then kind of organizing, indexing all your notes. But when we use a Matterport system, everything is right away kind of indexed in a 3D representation of the interior. So we can see here um, some good numbers that we have that HH Angus were able to collect based on their traditional methods of scanning versus you know, using the Matterport um, and scanning, I mean, using a tape measure and a distal meter and scratch, uh, you know, penciling everything on old legacy drawings of CAD um, from a while back. But look at the number of hours. It's almost half, if not more. So it's pretty significant when you start putting a dollar figure to your time that a lot of, I, you know, engineers, principals have a hard time really attaching to their staff's time. So again, these are, these are some additional um, outputs for the Matterport system. 
that you can also uh, export from your uh, scans. One of the nice thing, things about Matterport as well is, you know, taking the Matterport scans and, you know, uh, outputting it as a VR. So if you are going to a client site or having to show some at a little bit more uh, depth of what you saw, um, you can easily slide uh, slide your phone into um, a matter, uh, you know, Google Cardboard, and they easily see what, you know, what is it that was inside that uh, interior space. And you know, the, the final before we jump right into the, uh, the demonstration of the of the, the data itself, um, is it laser? Uh, it's not laser. It's using a structure light sensor, um, which would allow you to create a interior mesh of the entire uh, building. So that mesh eventually gets uh, decimated from an OBJ file into a point cloud file. And that's a fancy way of saying, making it lightweight that we can import it into AutoCAD or Revit later on. So we can start drafting on top of that as our reference uh, for the as built. So, you know, what's the, how easy is it to use Matterport? Like really simple. I would say probably the learning curve of our Matterport uh, users um, is within one to two hours. Um, you know, we always, whenever anyone buys a Matterport system, we usually uh, send them out uh, with a ton of information that they can read and watch videos and really start understanding how to use it. Um, you know, there's definitely best practices of using Matterport for big sites or you know complicated uh, interiors. Um, but generally speaking, like you know, just unboxing it and just practicing. Uh, in your office or at home, um, most of our users pick it up within one to two use, uh, hours of just, you know, getting a simple 4K walkthrough. So right now we're going to jump into seeing a couple of examples with the Matterport um, walkthrough, and then we're going to I'm going to show you what the point cloud data looks like in Revit, and uh, after that, um, I'll kind of open up the. Uh, uh, the presentation for questions and answers. Uh, definitely please use the chat or the question box within the GoToWebinar uh, dialog. And I will answer all the questions it, it had the ones are posted at the end. So first one we're gonna look at is a small little mechanical room I did a, a while back. Um, you know, it we're looking at a simple picture here. Um, I think if you've been to a lot of sites, you've probably seen <laughs> this type of scenario where you're trying to sketch it out. Now this I did as more of a proof of concept a while back, but we can imagine that this mechanical room was coming, you know, to the end of its life cycle and needed a ton of improvements. All the equipment had to be swapped out for new high efficiency components. So let me actually show you what this mechanical room looks like from my Matterport scan itself. So I'm gonna zoom out here, and here is the actual final products. I'm going to jump right into this. So this room is, I would say, somewhere in the range of maybe 700, 800 square feet. You know, we've got some tall ceilings here, and we've got a lot of piping going around here, and some electrical equipment here. And so this entire room took me about a half an hour um, from setting up my Matterport to packing it up. And I'll try to move a little bit slow. With the, with the sweeps here, just so you can see it, and it's not gonna appear choppy on it. But what we have in here is like all this visual information that we can easily share with our staff. You know, we can even go in here and we can take some quick measurements if we had to, you know, what was that concrete slab here? Well, it's roughly about nine and a half feet. You know, how much to that other side? No, oh, it's about four, four and a half feet. And again, these are all schematic estimates. So this is a lot of information that you typically cannot get from just your, you know, day-to-day -day notepad and um, and uh, a pen and decimal meter or a tape measure. Now we can also go in here with the Matterport system and zoom in on that and see, you know, if there's any critical information. We can see some of the detail on that. You know, if I actually did take my tripod and I brought it a little bit closer to the labels, I would actually be able to see the decals and any of the warranty information as well. 
but we can see some of the imprints as well and stamps on the piping and the valves. Now in here we also have the ability to you know take a look at those images I mentioned that we can use later on and save those at high res 4k. So an example here we can use that to demonstrate our engineering capabilities or some of our uh, craftsmanship you know if you're a contractor. We have the ability to request also a 2D uh, space plan if we want to. Not really difficult for mechanical rooms to be drawn up in AutoCAD or Revit. So this might not be a high benefit to you, but if you did require it for a building science report of you know each floor or a building, this might be of a great benefit to you because it's a small uh, nominal fee of $15 in order to get it. And then finally, the matter pack, which is a, uh, the point cloud data that comes in as a .xyz file, um, which is a small nominal feed every time you require it, uh, that you can download and then use that as the reference to start your design within AutoCAD or Revit. Now, before I kind of go a little bit further here, we can also you know, create annota annotations within, within our Matterport scan here. We can tag things if we had to, so we can go into an edit mode to share that. I'm just going to move my uh, web webinar <laughs> dialog here so I can see it here. So we could take a, a tag. And from here, we can add some additional information. Requires replacement. So you can imagine if you're a building owner, if you're representing a building owner, that you can use even the Matterport system for dealing with some of your tenders uh, with the trades. So rather than having to do all these walkthroughs, you just show them the Matterport uh, space that they can easily do a virtual walkthrough in here and take the measurements on their own within the Matterport space. So let's keep going here. Now I've got another bigger space. We were talking about you know how big is the uh, Matterport capable? Like how big of a space can you go? Well, this is a pretty substantial size gas plant right here. And we got a lot of information that we can again use to measure and we can share that measurement with maybe say a steel fabricator who might be creating a new um, you know skid or something for this area that we have to replace so now show my screen here. Now, I'm going to show you how we take that mechanical room and what we're going to do is that we're going to open it up in recap. Now, when you download your matter pack, it comes in as a zip file and it's full of information that might be useful to you but might not be. The file that we're looking for inside that matter pack is the .xyz file. And the .xyz file is the file that we want to use to create a recap project. So Recap is a software that is developed by Autodesk. And what it does is simply um, creates its own form of point cloud data that would easily import into Autodesk software. So you can import this Recap file format pretty much in uh, every Autodesk title. So say AutoCAD, AutoCAD MP, if you're using a specialized library, um, go into Revit, Navisworks, um, Inventor even. So a lot of different applications where you can use the point cloud data. So this for this is the point cloud from that mechanical room that we just scanned. And with this point cloud, I can start kind of dissecting it and taking a look at different views of it. Now we can go in a little bit further in and we can see all this points that starts creating some geometry. Now this is good, right? But it's not great yet. Because again, we need to get these points into an Autodesk authoring tool so we can start creating those as builds. We gotta start creating all those pipes to show what was existing and what is 
propose for later on. Now, the accuracy of this point cloud, I was actually within less than a quarter inch or so because, again, the space was not really big, right? It was a small space and it was within 99%. So you can see that that accuracy is based on, you know, relative space that all the smaller spaces are still going to give you high accuracy. But if you're looking for Matterport to give you, give me the total dimension of a big warehouse from, you know, one wall all the way to the other wall, you know, exterior walls, it's going to be a little off. So we don't recommend using that technology. But if you're looking for parts of the building to be scanned that requires updates, Matterport, it will be perfect. And the great thing about using Matterport, again, it's fast. You're not spending a ton of time on site waiting for it to scan. Like lasers might take minutes per sweep. So now we're going to actually see what that point count looks like right here in Revit. So I've got Revit open. And from here, it's a pretty simple process. We'll end up saving that file as a recap project. Open up a new file, new template if you have your template set up in Revit. And from here, we can easily go to Insert. I'll go a little bit slow. Again, this presentation is being recorded, so you can follow along later on on YouTube. And under the Insert, that point cloud. A little, I guess it looks like a bun with raisins. And in here, again, we're looking for that RCP file. And then the RCS file. The two difference between RCP and RCS is that one is a unified file, one is not. It doesn't matter how you save your recap project file from Matterport. You can save it as one project file and share it with the rest of your team, or you can just send them the entire uh, folder structure of your point cloud. When in doubt, don't worry. Don't just save it as whatever default option is, there is. So from here, I can take the, the point cloud and insert that into Revit. So now Revit, you know, just drops it in origin, origin, right dead center. And now I have this model. So now we look at this. If I was in the production team, I look at this. Oh, okay, no problem. I can easily draft this up quickly for you because I know exactly what's going on here. So we can go into floor plan, and I can easily create, if I remember how to do this, we'll go into an elevation. And we can start seeing different all those walls. So let's go into, for example, our level one. We're going to cut a section. And we want to see all, how all those pipes stack. Great. So now we can start seeing a good solid outline of everything in that room. So we can start creating a reference planes and start developing the piping systems and the adding in. So let me just. So an example is here I just imported it. And now I had uh, my colleague Drew Jarvis, our, one of our MEP specialists, quickly start modeling this. So what he's doing, he's going through the point cloud and finding where all the points are creating an edge and he starts developing the geometry. So you can see here he's making that transformer box. And I did speed this up just Again, I don't want to go through a very lengthy demo. I want to finish within the hour. And now he's adding some Revit families, adding the materials, using the reference of the point cloud to make the connections. And again, there's no guessing work here. He's going based on what is the truth based on, on the point cloud being the reality capture.
So now we've got a couple of stacks. And now he's creating those connections. And the good thing is if you're wondering how to how does he do this so quickly, again, we provide the training so you can learn how to use Matterport for Revit MEP engineering. And he is one of our trainers. There you go. So this entire exercise that he's doing, I just sped it up, which took about, give or take around 10 minutes. So a lot of information that he was able to develop, the walls, the doors, uh, the floors, the ceiling, and a few uh, pipe stacks within 10 minutes. So where is the value and power of Matterport? Well, compared to the other technologies out there, it's, again, it saves you a lot of time. It's an easy to use technology. The processing is done in the cloud. So it doesn't require any you know, big uh, CPUs to do the uh, uncompressing of your laser scans, wait for it to register scan by scan. All that is done automatically for you within the cloud, saving you a lot of time. Some other examples that we I did here with the Henderson Brewery. This is a bigger space. Uh, we did this at the last webinar uh, two weeks ago. And again, Jay Polding, he was able to develop a nice clean outline of the of the uh, brewery. Now, if you're an AutoCAD user, so again, you can import the point cloud within AutoCAD and use uh, the section tools within AutoCAD to start drafting, you know, the design. You can also import the PDF file within Revit and AutoCAD actually now um, and use that as your reference. But again, the point, uh, the point cloud will always be the most accurate way and, and understanding of the space. Some other things, if you're not familiar with Matterport, there are some enhancements within the capture app. So if you are dealing with you know very bland walls, you know that there's not enough detail in room, again, you can use the alignment tool to improve your accuracy of the point cloud later on. So overall, again, really great things to from the Matterport platform. You know, smaller data, easy to use, um, and it's a really you know cost-effective solution um, compared to some of the other more advanced stuff that might be about ten times the cost. So we've seen a lot of companies actually start purchasing multiple units and you know, equipping all their engineers to go to site to use a Matterport. They swear by it that they need to get a Matterport scan before they come back to the office to ensure that they have all the key de uh, details and they're able to verify all the issues or, you know, as built later on. So the compatible cameras that SolidCAD is uh, distributing here in Canada, we do provide the Matterport Pro 2 that we have here in stock. Um, they can purchase it through our e-store. And if you're looking for something a little bit more um, versatile for exteriors and interiors with longer range and accuracy, then you can go with the Leica BLK. The Leica BLK, again, it's a substantially higher price point. Um, and the workflow is a bit different, but again, the, the information still feeds into the Matterport cloud, so you can still get the point cloud out of your Leica BLK. But the one thing that a lot of our customers always are interested in is that resolution of that those images that walk through being only available in that Pro 2 unit at 134 megapixels compared to the Leica only at 34. Now, if you have any other questions, please, um, you know, you can reach out to SolidCAD, just email Matterport at SolidCAD.ca. You can also reach out to myself if you have my contact details. Um, we will be posting this on our YouTube channel as well. Um, I'm going to leave the, the floor open. I'm going to go through a couple of your questions right now. Um, so let me uh, just open the, this up here. All right, so we got a, oh, quite a bit of questions here. So let me hear. Okay. So the Matterport does only work with the iOS devices for Capture, the Capture app. So yes, you do have to use um, the Capture app on the iOS device. And the faster the iOS device, the faster 
the scan uh, uh, time between uh, setups is. So usually if you're using a Pro 2 uh, with an iPad Pro current generation, it wouldn't take you more than between about, um, I would say about 10 to 15 seconds between setups. Uh, any scanning issues or limitations when there are windows or mirrors in the room? Uh, absolutely not. There's not much of an issue. Um, within Matterport, you are able to actually mark off um, any of the uh, uh, reflective surfaces. So um, prior to uploading the, the scan to your cloud um, uh, plan for processing, you can mark up all those reflective surfaces with a kind of like a virtual plane to avoid all those reflections in what a system would typically think it's looking into the other room. So not a problem. Uh, can you use a, a Rico Theta Z to get an XYZ file or for Revit? The answer is no. Uh, fortunately, you, you have to use a structured light sensor, the Pro 2 camera in order to get the point cloud data for that. Um, how many scan points to cover that mechanical room? Um, well, that mechanical room I did earlier in 27 setups right there. So that only took me just a little under half an hour and I was using um, some older firmware on my iPad, so it did take a little bit longer. Um, but today if I use one of the current generation iPads, that uh, setup would have taken me maybe you know, 20 or less minutes. Uh, for the simple floor plan option, in what digital format is that floor plan received? Uh, that format would be in a PDF form. A vectorized PDF. Is the scan geodetically located? The answer is no. So Matterport scans, point cloud themselves. I'm just going to jump into here. Um, these are not uh, geo reference. Um, they are unstructured point clouds because again they are decimated from a mesh. So that's why when we zoom in here, um, you know, we get only so many points, and there might be some, like, you know, the imperfections in the, some of the hard edges. So, again, these are not georeferenced, and they're decimated point clouds. Um, might be one. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. So, might be worth mentioning adjusting your view range and bar clipping for sections and slices of the point cloud. More useful to show fewer points. That's correct. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so what are some of the scanning uh, best practices to get more reliable data? Um, take more scans on site. Uh, more snapshots on site would give you, you know, richer, uh, more detailed point clouds. Um, again, if you're always curious about getting more accurate, then definitely use the um, alignment, the matter tags, uh, sorry, the April tags that you can get right off the Matterport's website right here cost difference between and the last question here what is the cost difference between the leica and the matterport well the leica is around twenty five thousand, and the pro 2 is approximately just under five thousand so the pro 2 um, does require a cloud subscription in order to host and process all your data um, so again, the entry level for the cloud plans were about $69 a month. And when you started kind of looking at a kind of an overall total over four or five years, you're still way, way ahead of the laser scanners. Because again, laser scanners do require uh, firmware upgrades. And the Matterport only requires over the air upgrades. So all your firmware updates are coming um, through the uh, iOS capture app. The lasers, Again, have to sometimes be sent out for calibration, update the firmware. Um, you know, they're more prone to having issues with this mirror. So the Matterport is definitely a pretty robust, pretty uh, strong unit. And how can you manage in ceiling scans with the Matterport? Um, so only way to deal with uh, ceilings, pop them open. You know, if you have the ceiling tiles, Start popping all those ceiling tiles so you can get that Matterport scanner in there. Um, but that's usually the, what you would have to do. So I can show you a quick example. Uh, let's see if I have one. Uh, 
So here's an example of an open ceiling, but yeah, if you're going to have to go, you know, here's the duct work. We can see the outline of it right here, but if you needed to get, um, you know, all this duct work in their ceiling tiles, you're going to have to remove them. Yeah. So anyway, if uh, you have any more questions, uh, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. I'm going to post my uh, contact details right here in the chat box. And uh, feel free to email me with any additional questions. And uh, if you want to schedule an appointment for a discussion or further demonstration of the Matterport system, I am happy to schedule that for you. Um, and the last question, Matt, uh, what warranty does the Pro 2 have? It comes with a one-year standard warranty. Um, so any issues with the Matterport, um, you know, from a manufacturer defect or anything like that, uh, just call back, re send it back to SolidCAD, and we'll uh, handle that warranty exchange for you. Okay? With that, I want to thank everyone for joining uh, today. And uh, again, if you look at the chat, my information is there. And I'm going to just leave our other details here. Um, if you are interested in purchasing the Matterport, I should let you know that we do have a high demand for Matterport units on our website, our e-store. So again, uh, we have very limited uh, stock right now. Okay. Thank you very much and enjoy your day.